Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Cowboy Leather and Shoe Repair. I've had a few questions and I've seen a few comments uh, here and there. Uh, people got, I don't know if it's problems or that they just don't understand how to do it. Setting uh, rivets, splash rivets, or your standard, well, that's not standard, that's a short one, that's a half inch long, uh, copper harness rivets. And when I say splash rivets, a rivet looks like that, and it's got a hole in the end of it. Well, it's pretty simple. I've got a hand tool to set those, to set the splash rivet. I've got a Rex riveter, and I've also got the uh, automatic riveter for setting uh, the splash rivets, tube rivets, whatever you want to call them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you using just hand tools how to set these. And one question I've seen is somebody was using the uh, copper uh, rivets and burrs, and they asked this per no, I tell you back, let me rephrase this. Somebody used a uh, copper rivet with a burr, and somebody else asked them, how did you get that peen so look so pretty? You know, some people put them in, they tap them a little bit, then they they mushroom them out. Well, this, this guy had used that uh, copper rivet, and he had a nice rounded dome, no, no boogers, no sharp edges on it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me just tilt the camera down, and I'll show you how I do it. Let's see if I can get everybody in, in frame here. All right, slide this piece out. No, I need that. Flip this over. All right. When I say Rex Riveter, that's what this is. Uh, this is a Rex Riveter number one. Now, you can do the same thing with the uh, fancier versions that you get from uh, Tandy Weaver or Buckle Guy or wherever you buy your... Uh, professional grade tools but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this by hand all right these are uh, a quarter inch something like that drop it down in there and for demonstrational purposes we're going to use two pieces of five ounce leather now remember Okay, this is your finished side. This is the side that you want the public to see. So, you got to put it in like this, with face down, per se. Stick it in there. You don't want to poke a hole. Hear it crunching? Just like that. There you go. Now, if that happens, if when you're putting them in there and it happens to, to, to not go down in there and it's got a little bit of a burr on it, you're concerned, what I do is just take the hammer and go, no more burr. All right. Now. Let's do this with a longer one. That was um, stainless steel. This is a copper. This is three eighths of an inch long. So you're going to use that in something that's pretty thick. All right. Set that down. Now, this is the tool you use for splash rib. It's got a little bitty nipple in the end. It's got a bunch of nipples. You see it? Stick that on there like so. And 
and it does the same thing. All right, now, if you're going to use it in, in a rex riveter, I don't know, some of these you can, some of them you can't. All right. No, this is too thick. Anyways, put that in like so. Now, these don't work in a Rex River. I forgot about that. So you can't, they were too long anyways. Some of them are too long. That's where you'll run into problem. If, you're, if your material is too thick or not thick enough. I don't like using anything that thick. And you'll probably never ever run into anything that's going to be that thick. Now I'm going to show you a little something here. Now say you got that in there and you don't like it. It bent or it's, it just does not please you. My banging anvil has got a hole in the middle of it. So what I do is I take that, lay it over there, get that out of the way. No grinding. Take it right out. You can drill them. But sometimes when you drill them, they'll spin. So I just take, use that hole. Now, uh, let's see here. Let's let's set this copper rivet. Poke a hole in your leather. Now these are half inch copper rivets your little itty bitty burr it goes on there bring that back put that on there like so now this is what I've got for setting these this has got a deep hole on it that goes clear probably someplace up into here. Put that on there. One wick. Let me get my now. I don't jam it all the way down. Chop it off like that. I don't know if you can see how tall that is, but leave a little bitty bit on there. Now, next to this hole, you've got a dome. It's like they took a drill and drilled in there to make like a little dome. Put that on like over, put that dome over top of that. And it domes it. It's not sharp. Now, what some people do is they'll put it on there and not use the dome section. They'll tap it with the flat part hammer. They'll jump it over. That does leave a little bit of a sharpness. Now you can come back. Tap it, and it does take some of that sharpness out of there. 
But, you know, that's... And you get something thin like this. We'll set a splash ribbon. Where's my tool? There it is. Take the tool. No boogers, no sharp edges. Now, some, pe some people will argue the fact that stitching is more secure than using copper rivets or rivets like this. These, I, my feeling and opinion is they will hold a lot longer and a lot stronger than stitching. Now the cap rivets that you get, those are eh. They, I have had them, you know, let go. But if I'm going to make something like a belt or whatever, I rivet. I do put snaps on them, but I use rivets. If I'm doing some uh, horse tack repair or horse harness repair, I use... Uh, Copper rivets. Now the copper rivets come in brass, stainless steel, and copper. And like I say, the splash rivets, they come stainless steel, copper, and I think they come in brass also. But now, when you buy your copper rivets, don't go on to some place and buy a set a bag of 10 you can go i think it's for between 18 19 dollars you can get a pound of i think it's number nines uh one inch long uh and a nine you buy a pound and you get more and I use nines, and I think the other ones are twelves. You get more in a box of twelve, or in a in a size twelve or number twelve. You get more per pound than you do with the uh, eights and nines. Yes, a pound is a pound, but it takes more number twelves to make a pound. So, that's the best thing I can explain. That's the best way to, you know, round that, round that cap off when you put these in. So, they look decent, and there's no sharp edges. And that's, that's the key point. No sharp edges so the customer doesn't cut, cut themselves or catch, any, catch on their clothing if you're using them in belts. So, I just, like I said, just want to pop in here. I've seen some comments. I've had people ask me. And I can't remember if I made a video on this or not. But I did now. So, if you've already seen a video that I've done pertaining to this, disregard. Just carry on. Have a good day. All right. I'm going to get out of here. It's Friday. And I'm ready to start my weekend. And the weather's gotten a little warm, but it's supposed to cloud up. We're supposed to possibly get some rain. And this weekend is supposed to start getting colder again. I think I saw the temperatures, nighttime temperatures, are going to be down into the uh, 40s. And I think one day they said it was supposed to get down into the 30s. 
So I guess spring or fall has fallen upon us. The leaves are falling out of the trees. And I'm happy. I, I'm tired of that 80, 90, 100 degree weather. So I'm going to get out of here. Hope everybody has a good, had a good week. Hope everybody has a good weekend, a safe weekend. And this video is done. And I'm out of here. Bye.